Welcome to the sixth video in this series, where you are now finally going to fire up the first motor of your quadcopter. In this session, you will not have to program anything because we are going to cut out the flight controller and directly connect the receiver to the electronic speed controller or ESC. This way, you will be able to directly control the motor from a receiver channel. It will also enable you to directly test various important active components the radio system, battery, motor and electronic speed controller. Let's start by having a look at the motor you will use. A tiny brushless GE PRC motor rated at 5000 kV. This motor weighs about 6 grams. The motor comes with screws to fasten both the motor to the frame and the propeller to the motor. With the 2 cell battery and a 3 inch propeller, this motor gives around 150 grams of thrust, meaning that 4 motors will easily be able to lift your quadcopter. Slide the 3 inch gem fan propeller down the motor shaft and push it firmly on the top of the motor. Use two of the longest screws to fasten it. Next, cut the white connector from the three black motor cables as you will not use it. Strip each cable carefully, such that you can solder them to the frame later on. The wires are very tiny, so it could take some attempts to get this step right. Attach the motor to the quadcopter frame with the four shortest screws. Make sure that none of the screws touch the motor windings to avoid damage. Attach the quadcopter frame firmly to your desk using tape. Now let's continue by connecting the motor via the ESC to the battery connector. You can use wire terminal strips for the temporary connections, but it's easier to connect the wires with wire connectors such as the Wago 221. First, connect the three motor wires to the black, red and blue ESC wires. The order doesn't matter. Switching two wires will cause the motor spinning direction to reverse. You can still switch it later. Use some tape to fix the wire connectors as well, such that they will not end up against the propeller. Now connect the XT60 battery connector with the black and red wire from the ESC. In this case, you have to make sure to respect the colors. Almost all connections are made. Finish by connecting the ESC to the receiver. You will also have to bind the receiver to the transmitter in order to enable both to communicate with each other. The FSIA6 receiver and transmitter are used for this project. Connect the ESC to channel 3 of the receiver. This channel corresponds to the position of the left stick on the radio transmitter. Turn on the power button of your radio transmitter while simultaneously holding the bind key button. The text RX binding should be displayed. Now connect the bind plug with the B-VCC pins on the receiver. Make sure the left stick is in its lowest position to avoid a sudden start of the motor. Connect the battery with the XT60 connector to power both the motor and receiver. You will hear one beep from the radio transmitter indicating that it's coupled to the receiver. The three next beeps come from the ESC and indicate that the motor is ready to start. Now gradually increase the left stick to start the motor. You are now controlling the motor speed from channel 3 of the transmitter. One thing remains to be done. You have to tell the ESC what the upper and lower position of the transmitter stick corresponds with. Once again, this is a form of calibration. Let's proceed. First, make sure your battery is not plugged in. Turn on the radio transmitter and put the throttle stick to its uppermost position. When connecting the battery, this makes sure the ESC goes in programming mode. After connecting the battery, you hear one beep from the transmitter and subsequently some beeps from the ESC. Move the throttle stick to its lowest position between the first and the fourth beep. After two seconds, 
the ESC should give two times two beeps, indicating that calibration is finished. Increase the throttle stick to start and control the motors. When you get a linear behavior from the lowest to the highest position of the stick, the calibration was successful. You should calibrate your three other ESCs following the same steps. This is necessary to ensure a smooth flight later on. In the next video, you will learn how to connect your receiver to your TNC and read the signals from your radio transmitter.